gonna have my guest here in a second uh-huh there she is we are good I just want to make sure everything's live welcome welcome to the EFE show e-commerce family entrepreneurs brought to you by e-commerce kids my name is Monica Busby cycling CEO and mama head honcho of EK this is a show that we bring to you every week to give you tips and strategies to get ahead in building not only just for your wealth but for generational wealth for generational prosperity for generational influence how about that real not to mention some real life superhero skills you know what I mean it's gonna be awesome let's take it up a notch alright so we're gonna do a little bit of tagging um, if you guys are watching this right now and you know somebody that is wanting to know this stuff please tag them on the comments below we'd love to get them more involved and also if you could hear us um, loud and clear maybe um, Danielle you could do a little mic check um, if you guys can give us a little wow face or some heart faces to be able to see our or hear our voice and we could be all ready to go can you do a quick mic check yeah, hey guys, how are you? All right. What's up tonight? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and also, let's take a quick moment. I want to definitely share this broadcast, and then we can officially get this going. Give me one second here. Let's see. Oh, there we are. Let me share. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? I know probably a couple of you guys, especially from LA, is um, drive, maybe driving home from traffic, unfortunately. But how about the East Coast? Um, I'm sure everybody's uh, just finishing up dinner. <laughs> oh, here we are. Okay, so I am going to share this. This is going to be great. And there we go. All right, so we have a special, special guest for you today. I am so stoked to have her here. And um, I wanted to, she's, I would say, a second generation entrepreneur. She's teaching her kids how to be entrepreneurs, third generation. And when I heard about her story, I had to have her on the show to just talk about what it means to be an entrepreneur from I guess from childhood being raised by entrepreneur parents but also to be a parent ourselves or herself to now be able to pass on the the values the um, importance the the habits of running your own business and um, we have here Danielle Fritz in the house woo -woo! <laughs> I feel like Miss America with that interview, no, no, no. introduction <laughs> we are, it's so cool because we're so colorful today I got blue in the background you got like that reddish pink in the background it matches our hair you know so yeah. <laughs> um, always <laughs> So before you quickly start, I just want to make sure that this is a live broadcast, but it's also going to be rebroadcasted. So don't be afraid to just post your questions, whether it's during the live or during the rebroadcast, because I will definitely chime in and still answer your questions. Um, so please definitely leave a comment. And um, now with Danielle, I, mean, I guess my first question is, please do tell us about yourself. And um, what has been the influence with your with your parents? So I am, like, like you said, a second generation entrepreneur here in Dayton, Ohio. Born and raised. I've never left Ohio. Um, I've owned my own business as well as worked with my parents. I've only had two paychecks ever in my life. 
that I didn't write myself because I it's very important that you pay yourself as soon as you can so you don't feel a slave to your business so a little little tidbit there um, my daughters are 20 in their 26 27 28 ish mm -hmm. um, married they both have kids they both have two kids so I have four grandkids my husband and I are both only children uh, my dad had brothers and, a, and sisters but my mom was raised uh, by her grandparents she was an only child uh, they both went to work for Ma Bell in the 70s I was born my dad really just didn't like the um, he's an electrical engineer by trade which has nothing to do with what we are what we sell <laughs> what our career is because <laughs> we're in retail uh, and they both worked for Ma Bell, they both quit, they both started doing their own thing. Uh, we were, were in the coin business, the numismatic business. Mm -hmm. So we sell um, coins and coin supplies and uh, bullion, gold. Uh, my mom is actually an estate jewelry aficionado, but basically my dad didn't like the management position he was put in and he hated the hiring firing and dealing with all of the the uh just the the 70s the, the all that the the politics and the so politics of the 70s <laughs> that was scary it's scary yeah. to quit something that's secure yeah, yeah. and, and uh, as i said he just started in the last year taking his retirement and it's like a couple hundred bucks it's just kind of ridiculous but he froze his retirement in 77 or 76, and that's what he gets today. You know, we can't rely on that. It's kind of scary because, yeah. you know, like we talked about earlier, even if, if you're making 10 grand a month now, 30 years from now as your pension, per se, that's probably nothing. Um, hard to live with that amount. So, yeah, I, I'm just yeah, so too. glad that he, he made that jump and decided to to go a different path in his career life. So how did that influence you growing up and seeing all that? So I didn't know what an entrepreneur was. In third grade is when my dad uh, transitioned into, you know, doing his own thing. So people would always ask me, well, what are your parents doing? I'm like, oh, they're entrepreneurs. Again, not really re realizing what it was that they did <laughs> <laughs> or realizing what that word meant. And then when I realized that they work for themselves and my friends, like, you know, my friend's dad was an airline pilot. And then there was like the rest of them worked at GM or, you know, something like that. And I was like, oh, well, I, I don't I don't get that. We're we're always like my dad would literally be on the road from Wednesday to Sunday and my mom would stay home and run the business out of our house, the mail order business. <laughs> so. Then I finally, after I figured out what an entrepreneur was, they're like, well, what do your parents do? And I'm like, oh, they're numismatists. And then they're like, okay, I don't know what that word means. So <laughs> that's good. That's cool. I understand it. I get it. Well, so if you don't know what a yeah, numismatist what, what is, that? is <laughs> it is a person who studies and collects coins, metals, tokens, et cetera, so forth. So my dad's mm -hmm. specialty is U.S. coins. And he would do wholesale trading shows um, pre eBay. I like eBay just changed the world in the in the late nineties. Pretty amazing, yeah. Yeah. So what we would do basically on eBay is what we used to travel to show to show to show. And honestly, I I said it. I I've never known working for anyone else, so it kind of scares me to think that I would have to ever work for someone else. <laughs> But, you know, the work ethic was just always there. So so you got to see just, him work really hard. And how about your, your mom? Was she more of a stay-at-home or she also had a job? And She worked for um, Ohio Bell, but shortly after I was born, she tried to go back to work and she hated mm -hmm. it. She wanted to be a full-time mom. So working at home or being an entrepreneur gives mm -hmm. you that flexibility I'm sure you understand <laughs> huge difference it's yeah. still scary because we don't know if we're gonna have a paycheck tomorrow but that's the benefit the advantage and the disadvantage <laughs> of a of an entrepreneur but there's a, definitely a lot more advantages so yeah for sure I, but let's just get real we can't all say that it we can't 
completely say it's all glorified because it's, it's, we do work hard. When it's time to work, we're on. And, and I say that about, uh, you know, I have employees. I say that to my employees. I'm like, you know, we work really hard when we need to. So that fourth quarter, we're just banging it out. We're mm-hmm. working those 12, 15 hour days. But, you know, now we're about to go into our slow season, which we're prepping for Christmas. But, you know, we don't have to work the extra two hours of the night. We can we can come in and leave and take one hour and 15 minute lunches or, um, you know, I, I do perks for my like we're we're about to take our crew out for um, kind of a, 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 an old employee, new employee, current employee lunch. And, you know, mm-hmm. where we can take 20 people and take the afternoon for three hours with them and have fun with them or we've taken them to Vegas and we've taken them to Atlanta and um, actually we just came back from Atlanta and one of my big things is I uh, we went to a Braves game and I had never been to a Braves game and I'm not a baseball person at all and I got a chance to sit next to you (laughs) that's how we met and did we not have fun (laughs) it was the best time yeah (laughs) so I when I was texting my employees and showing them the Braves field I'm like I'm going to bring you guys here one day so that's the next thing on my bucket list is I want to be able to because we can get and I've told you we can get inexpensive flights from Cincinnati to oh my gosh I want to take them to a Braves game yeah so that's one of my bucket list goals for them and if we can achieve we have goals and dollar amounts that they have to achieve and they work as a team when they see that so i'm going to take them to an atlanta braves baseball game next summer that's on my bucket list so so how are your what has been kind of the values that you have grown up with seeing your 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 parents not only just struggle but also you know living that life of an entrepreneur like what what instilled what are the things that they'd instilled in you growing up and made you say okay i i just want to go that route um i freedom is definitely one of those things working hard was always instilled in me um achieving goals because you know a big goal is just to have dinner on the table right but Mm. even the bigger goal is um, you know, being able to take a nice vacation or for me, it's more about doing better in the world and for others. So that has definitely been one of our core values of our company for many, many years. And I'm going to say the biggest one is probably integrity. Hmm. So, you know, honesty in your business, honesty with customers, employees and your network. And so I just, when I look back at my parents have now been in business for 45 years, and I know that because that's how old I am, so I'm showing my age, (laughs) but my mom went and got her first vendor's license, I think it, my mom's probably on here, she's probably going to correct me, Um, (laughs) I think it was two days after I was born, so 45 years ago, and when I look back at all the things we've done in the world, I, you know, I look back and I, I always tell them, I'm like, look at this employee that we had or that employee and look where we got them in their life and their world. And so biggest one is integrity. Second biggest hard work. And you had, you had more freedom too growing up where your parents are more involved in many of your activities um, because they can. And so oh, you, sure. you really got a chance to build that relationship with them and you felt like you had more security, um, especially because being an only child, um, I'm sure that having them around was just uh, wonderful for building your character, all that good stuff. So I said how we, um, um, I did leave like on a Wednesday and come back on a Sunday because you have to go to a trade show. but in the summer, like right now, we would be prepping, and I know you can relate to this too, (laughs) we would be prepping to get in the car and go show to show to show to show to show. So we would be on the road for two months in the van, you know, selling our goods, trading our coins, and um, did you ever, did you ever felt like summer trips? Did you, were two and three months long. So was that like more of a fun summer vacation for you? Or was were you kind of felt like, man, they're pushing me too much. I just want to, you know, relax. Or 
it wasn't it was just the norm and yeah that, it, that's the norm yeah so because that was the norm you created your lifestyle to be as successful as it can be through that through those habits you yeah. know I wanted to share I that I wanted to share what I posted on our group because it was just, it blew me away. And maybe you can put some insight on this is that on Inc. Magazine, it's telling me that 90%, 90%, 9-0 guys, businesses, family businesses fail or they don't even make it to the third generation. So to me, I'm like, that's almost, that's pretty scary because you're, you're working so hard to start this business, whatever it is. And you're growing it, you're growing, you're putting your sweat and tears on it, knowing that it's going to die someday, 90% of the time. So how, you being a second generation, like how, what what are the things that we can do to be mindful of that? Because I don't even think we even go, we don't even think beyond that. We're just thinking to survive right now for our business to survive this economy or this year um, with things that are going on in the world. What are your thoughts um, on that? Maybe it's a mindset thing. I don't know. 90%. Well, one thing I can say that's a little bit different in our business than let's just say if we were a manufacturer or a farmer or something like that mm -hmm. is that we're in retail. So mm. even though my dad and mom started in coins, it revolved to buy jewelry, and then I went into the giftware, the finer you know, the Swarovski, the finer gift wares, uh, tchotchkes of the world. Um, and then that evolved into one day we decided we were going to go on the internet. 20 years, a couple months, be 20 years mm. on the internet. <laughs> wow, veteran. Yeah. So I, yeah, in fact, bringing up eBay, I was like one of their consultants in the very early, early days on their <laughs> categories. So oh, kind of felt honored for that. Um, but we are able, we've just been able to change what we do, but we're all in retail. So my daughter now runs a boutique in the front of our store where my parents still work in the back because again, they're, they're, they're trying to retire, but they don't know what to do with themselves. Let's get real. <laughs> and entrepreneurs don't, we don't retire. retire. What is that word? Who came up with the word retire? I just feel like it's such a, when you retire, it's like, poof, you might as well just go kaput because you have no purpose now um so yeah i think us entrepreneurs will probably go crazy with yeah. the word i got a joke on that one yeah <laughs> because uh one of my employees my he was joking with my dad and he goes well ed what do you what would you do if you did retire and he goes well i like fishing but gary there's no way i'm paying you to go fishing with me <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> So, oh, I, you know, it is really sad, but w I think what you can do if you are so worried about your business not surviving after you and your children taking over is you've got to make them a part of the business. You just can't mm. let them reap the rewards of, oh, you absolutely. know, here, here's some money, go play. You need to bring them in and, and it's still, you know, hey, I work for a paycheck, I'm going to, you're going to start working for a paycheck. they got to learn how to earn. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My grandson, he comes in on a Saturday with his mom and he Fourth is generation, by the way. Fourth generation. Yeah. This is great. Number three, he's six. Yeah. Even my seven year old grandson, when he comes into town, he'll come and work a day with his Aunt Dee Dee at the boutique. So again, she has a boutique in the front of our, our retail store. Uh, we divided the store again so that we can have offices in the back and then retail in the front. Um, but the grandson, six-year-old, he will come in on awesome. a Saturday. He is so great with people, even <laughs> women. He's like, can I can I help you to the dressing room? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, that might sound odd, but I guess the the, the ladies are like, <laughs> I thought it was funny. He's so funny. cute, right? <laughs> yeah. But he works yeah. for socks, so he likes the fun socks that we stock in the boutique, and he will sticker bags or sticker boxes or her yeah, uh, I don't know, clean the glass or, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll give him something to do so that he can go earn his socks for the day. That is so, so funny. I did that with my kids all the time. You know, I'm like, hey, you want to be a band? Well, it's two grand. You're going to have to cop up a grand. I don't mm -hmm. know how we're going to do it, but we'll figure it out. 
So if they had to come in and work every Saturday to get their band money, that's what they had to do. And if they had to sticker boxes or I don't even know what we had them do, but they, they always worked very hard. And again, they went out and got real jobs and then they're like, they're kind of the same way. They're like, hmm, do I really want a real job? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the key. And we were talking about this earlier is that, you know, the parents, it, it, it's so important for the parents to instill the earning and not the entitlement factor. Um, and yeah. you don't have to be wealthy to to um, show them that they can be entitled. You know, even it, all income brackets, you got kids that, that have entitlement issues. They don't have mm -hmm. to be wealthy. And it's through the habits that they've been forming. It's so easy for us. I think it's in America, we're very fortunate that people that still struggle financially seems to still do pretty well um, and live well off compared to the rest of the world. So, yeah, good stuff. So you're providing value for what are I mean, what are the values that you're instilling to your children now? Um, through this business of course it's you know hard work anything else and learning how to earn learning how to earn but I think again I'll go back to integrity you know mm. just being a good citizen I think I think that it, being an entrepreneur there, there's just so many facets and and learning how to work with people and teamwork and um, you know, I go back to the hiring and firing, but you may never have to do that, but at least you learn how to work with people. And or I, I, I told you this earlier, my mm -hmm. kids, well, actually one of my daughters has two degrees and the other one just, you know, never even made it to college. And I never mm -hmm. made it through college. I told you I went back three times. Every time I go back, I'm like, I should be working on my own business. I know more than this guy. I need to, I can't even play a video game without feeling guilty about not working on my business. <laughs> but um, they, even though they have degree, one, one has two degrees and one has no degree, I taught them how to sell and I taught them mm. how to work and survive. I mean, even if it wasn't even selling, it was, you know, hey, can I go wash your car? Can I shovel snow? Can I clean your windows? I mean, just... I can't even think of the things that they uh, they would sell lemonade on the Fourth of July. So they probably um, never felt broke at one point because they always had the tool to try to earn a, a dollar. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. Huge. That's huge. exactly. So they just knew how to work, and I think that's what we don't instill in our kids because again, there's the entitlement, or they're there. Here's your, you know, my parents always said, "Well, here's your." Um, what do you call it um, when your parents give you a weekly budget allowance uh, allowance oh. allowance mine wasn't an allowance mine was you're gonna get 20 bucks but you're gonna have to mow the grass wash Not the yet. dishes you know and and I always tease kids that come into you know my dad's coin shop I'm like so you know they come in and they can get like eight for a dollar coins and I'm like well are you gonna go home and wash the dishes for mom so you can get a couple more bucks and then dad and mom are like, oh, that's a good idea. You know? <laughs> it's like the first <laughs> thought of like, whoa. <laughs> even if they don't do an excellent yeah. job, you're teaching them to, the value of earning a dollar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Awesome so, stuff. You know, just, you know, make them work for school, school things, you know, after school activities. Do they realize how much the gas costs to get to and from the soccer game or you know, do they realize how much time you're giving up by sitting there and watching them? I mean, not that you want to guilt your kids, but, you know, they need to understand that, uh, especially in an entrepreneurial lifestyle, that mm -hmm. we, even though we're not here working our business, we're here and we're able to do this as parents together because we have this lifestyle. Because how many moms and dads sit on the bleachers together at four o'clock in the afternoon? It is a beautiful thing. And just also being able to travel together and don't have some kind of deadline that they have to get back to work. I mean, you could really live a, a lifestyle of however, um, whatever you wanna do. Some businesses are just with a laptop, you know, and, and they could just be anywhere with the laptop homeschooling their kids. I, I'm seeing families that just travel the world for a year or two because they can, and then they just have a blog or 
they they do e-commerce um, mm-hmm. so it's it's an amazing time for for our era of business owners because we have the technology we have you know we can do retail anywhere around the globe we're so connected to everybody um, so it's not just having a brick and mortar store anymore it's about being connected to social media being connected to an e-commerce platform being connected to um, Shopify or Amazon I mean there's just so much opportunity and and I was I don't know where I got it from I think it was from I'm not sure which statistic it was but I was reading that eight percent of people buying online um, is, are just still buying on the on uh, on the internet and then the rest is still brick and mortar so that means that e-commerce is still fairly new eight percent of the world are buying online that's it oh, for sure. that is it and so there's a lot of opportunity there for growth for sure so one last question I, w- I would love for you to share like a superhero moment in your life <laughs> superhero moment yeah. in my life um okay well this this goes back to the team and the family and um two years ago my family and i they were honored by the better business bureau at eclipse integrity award so when i got to go up and grab that award um i was able to um say how much again kind of like this show how much my parents meant to me and how they you know they got together they Mm -hmm. fell in love in Dayton Ohio they built a business in Dayton Ohio they've employed 80 I think I last count 88 employees through the last just 15 years you know um the beautiful people we put in the world um moms dads um you know I have I have people right now that you know are, are raising a family on the little bit that we, little job that they have with us. I I just love that. So um, to be honored for all of that hard work in a public setting in our own hometown, our own home city, that was my superhero moment. We're we're able to take care of other families with our businesses. That's Exactly. And even the people that are on internet only businesses, because, uh, you know, I talk about this all the time. Um, you know, we're Amazon sellers. I, I'm an Amazon seller. I, mm-hmm. I have an e-commerce. I have several e-commerce sites. I have a brick and mortar. But if it wasn't for the online, I would mm-hmm. have never been able to grow my business the way that it's grown. And honestly, if it wasn't yeah. for Amazon, we wouldn't have survived a couple years because same, that same was here. a good chunk of our business. Same so, here. Um, You know, I'm able to employ people even though it's not, I'm I'm such a buy local person. If you know me, I walk the walk, I talk the talk, I shop at the local market, I go to the craft breweries, I, you know, even when I'm out of town, I find the littlest venue to eat at. (laughs) I mean, I'm totally all about small business, buy local, Mm -hmm. but Amazon has been able to, to give me an extra three employees to keep our, our dollar to keep them locally employed that so is, and that's uh, the we best go back part to, you yeah. know you can do it on a laptop or you can do it with 10 or 20 people so right now i'm still in the 10 or 20 people and i love employing people and i love getting to know what their why is and getting them into the next step in the world and making them successful people so that's me in a nutshell there's my superhero i love it and what i what love I'm all about <laughs> and i love connecting with people like you you guys really inspire me and that's probably why I wanted to do a show or even start this kind of business because we can easily just put our head down and work on our own business but if we could find a way to um, share and help the growth and the wealth um, amongst our community I think it's just gonna return tenfold for for those that do that so oh, I totally awesome. agree. There's so much business yeah, in the world. There's you don't have to be the last man on the sale. You don't have to pounce on other people's mm-hmm. product, business, whatever. I mean, there's just there's abundance. There's this big pie abundance. in the world, and I just want a slice of it. Exactly, one <laughs> percent, maybe two yeah, percent. Yeah, just 
a tenth of a percent, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a question for the day, guys. Um, have your parents set you up for success in business? If so, what lessons and tips did you learn from them? Please post those comments below because I would love to be able to um, share it among the EFE community. Our goal here is to collect and discuss some of these best tips and how we can help each other in our business. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Danielle, for coming um, on the show and sharing your your wisdom. And please, I would love for you to come back again in the future. I, I'm, I want to. We actually, I do want to have a topic of how to take care of employees more in detail because it's so vital to the survival of our business. We can't do this alone. So I would the love, teamwork. yeah, it's all teamwork. And employees are also kind of in a way our kids too, right? So. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. I gotta tell you my quote. Okay. You know, it, it, being a mom made me a good boss ah. and being a boss made me a great mom. So I like that. I'm gonna have to quote you on that one. I love yeah. it. I've always believed that. Great. Woo. All right. So if you guys want to know more about this, join our email list, join our Facebook group, and definitely subscribe for more videos on our YouTube channel. And if you will, please, please let me know if you like these kind of topics um, and maybe other topics you can post on the comment below for a future broadcast. And also love it love it please like the button below if you like this video and this content um, please do share it uh, we love danielle we love to share her story and um, what we've le lessons that we've learned from her and her life and um, i am going to be doing this on a weekly basis so please stay tuned every tuesdays at 5 30 we are going to have additional special guests in the e-commerce world in the business world in life coaching in parenthood and even in teen or preteenhood, we'll bring some kids up in here and talk about how they're um, living their life at right now with parents that are entrepreneurs. Eeks. So hopefully they'll have something good to say. You can <laughs> interview my daughter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be fun. Well, and you know this is live, so we can't really like delay anything. <laughs> but it's, it's all good. You know we'll keep it raw. We'll keep it raw. So you could find it more at www.facebook.com forward slash e 